Hello, beautiful people. This is Vlad from Synaptic Schism. And today I'm doing something a little bit different. It's the first time that I'm revisiting on a topic I already made a video about. And that topic is to calibrate your headphones for mixing and mastering. So I'm going to give you the short version of this so that you can decide if you want to watch the rest of the video or if you want to do something else. The short version is do not calibrate your headphones or your speakers. Do not use any software. The only thing that you need to do is to listen to music on the system that you record, write music, mix, master, and so on. That's, that's the gist of it. That will be the final conclusion of this video. Now, one of the three things is going to happen. Either one, you think I'm full of BS and you are going to watch another movie. That's fine. The second one is you agree with this and you have all the information that you need, which is fine. You can do something else also. And the third one is, okay, you find the idea interesting. So now you want to hear more about it. All right. So I'm going to do exactly that. So this is the setup that I have. It's not great. I mean, the gear is not incredibly bad. It's okay. I have these speakers correctly positioned near me. I have these speakers and this amplifier for, I don't know, 30 years or something like that. It was actually a gift from someone that really liked my music and I cherish them quite a lot. I also have my headphones that have got new pads and, and that's it. Uh, this is where I listen to music and this is where I write music, where I mix, where I master. Now, in the video that I did before, my whole point was that the software to calibrate headphones and speakers didn't really work for me. And that in the end, I ended up setting a EQ on the monitoring bus so that I would have the sound that I was expecting on a certain track, mine's and from the Avengers, but that would not color the, uh, the, the master, the output, the file. Um, what happened after that video, some months later, I found another software. I don't recall the name, but it's not important. And I switched off the EQ and I added that software. And I used it exclusively to correct the headphones. Nothing else, just headphone correction and nothing else but that. Uh, and uh, for months, I was very happy with that. I felt that the output was very linear. I was enjoying listening to, to my music on, on my headphones. Um, I was not enjoying it on my speakers, which was the initial motivation to get the calibration for the headphones. Some months later, I found out that the plugin in my template, the corrections plugin, was in fact bypassed. And the bypass inside the plugin didn't communicate with the digital audio workstation which meant that there was no visual indication that the plugin was bypassed. So for months I was writing music, mixing and mastering, believing that everything was corrected for my headphones when in fact I was getting pure sound without any correction on my headphones and on my speakers. And that to me was astonishing. I couldn't believe that it was possible that I was improving without having any correction on my headphones, specifically on my headphones. I also started to note other things. The first one was that it was very clear to me that I had a lot of music that sounded good on my speakers, but my own music didn't. And when I did the car test, my music sounded as bad as other tracks from other artists. But then I got a new car and the music sounded better except mine. So the problem was me because I was mixing and mastering. So what I did was I created a playlist on Spotify with only with music that I know really, really well. And it has everything from metal, obviously, because that's what I listen to the most, to hip hop, uh, to cinematic music, um, to jazz, to intervention music, like singer-songwriter kind of stuff, 
uh, well-produced music, not so well-produced music, and so on and so forth. I have a lot of music there, but it's music that I know really, really well. And when I listen to new music that I really like, I just add it to that list. What ended up happening, and this is the big difference, was that I started to listen to that playlist on these speakers and on these headphones. And I started to understand, because I know those tracks really well, what it, what it means to sound good on my speakers and on my headphones. Even with a rather poor setup that I have here because of the walls and the window behind me and so on. So this is my current view on the subject. Not correcting, but listening to commercial professional music in the same environments where you are producing music. So every time that I'm listening to music that it's passive listening, that I'm not paying attention, I just have that playlist playing in these speakers, on my laptop, in the car, wherever I go, that's the music that I'm listening to in the same places that I'm going to test my track on. That gives me a much better sensibility of what is it that I'm listening to that sounds uh, good, bad, things like that. And that has made quite a big difference. Now, my music sounds a lot better in my car. It sounds a lot better in my speakers. I started to create these little tricks while I'm writing music to sort of have it pre-mixed before I commit to the final arrangement and start mixing, which I'll, I'll probably talk at some point in the future. It's really simple stuff but it starts with one and only one important difference. No correction anywhere at all, but at the same time, listening to professionally mixed and mastered music in the same setups that I'm going to be listening to the music that I mix and that I master. And I believe that that makes all of the difference. I'm not saying that this is going to be a quick fix. But this is a habit that you can build over time that will probably help you mix and master your music better. So I hope that this was helpful. And until the next video, bye-bye.